I know everybody is really busy in your practice, or at least trying to convert um, some of you a traditional practice into integrated medicine, and it's not easy. So uh, my job here is to really share with you my discovery of how this has all happened in myself first. Um, at age 42, that was seven years ago, I'm, I just turned 50, and I was really struggling not only with my practice, I was an internist, hospitalist, I also had my own nursing home, um, I was a nursing home director. And at that time, I was struggling not only in my own house, also financially, I was really struggling in doing the right thing for my patients. Because we are running out of time, we're running out of money, and we're running out of our own life. And so at that time, I started learning about integrated medicine initially really for my own health, because I was having so much autoimmunity issues, sleeping issues, and gaining weight, losing muscle mass at the same time. So um, as you can see, I really want to talk to everyone as a woman in my age group first. Then we can go into how to, you know, what is really going on in our practice. And after obtaining all this information for myself, of course, my patients start to, you know, be very interested. One thing about the burning question today is why do modern people age faster than our parents and grandparents? My mother is 86 years old. She's a practicing cardiologist in China, in Beijing. My grandmother lived until 96, and she learned English at age 86. And she did not have cataracts but that at the time she was passing away. And she lived a very long life, very healthy. And I said, you know, wait a minute. I, I was only 42 years old. What is going on with me? I have really good genes. And this is the key. <laughs> Gene raised the gun and environmental factors pull the trigger. We all have genetic weaknesses. We have strengths and some people have more problems than others, right? But why the disease are happening at a younger age? Why people seemingly have good genes are not doing as well as their parents and grandparents? And this is the, this is the fundamental Answer, really, gene raised the gun, and environmental factors pull the trigger. And I discovered in modern life, there are two root cause, causes of problems we face today, more so than our parents and grandparents. It's not like we're weaker. We're just facing more, prob more challenges. One of them is chronic stress. How many people in this room have no stress at all? And raise your hand. We'll move in with you. <laughs> I saw one hand there. Environmental pollutions is one of the new challenges. As an integrated physician, I did not realize how serious that is until when I discovered more and more. Of course, chemicals, heavy metals, electromagnetic frequencies, radiation, modern radiation exposure, and GMOs. And of course, we have more and more things coming up. Right? It causes a tree of sickness. And I don't, want to, I don't want to go over every single one, but metabolic diseases are, continue to rise. You know, obesity is now not only internationally epidemic, I mean, not only in the United States, it's internationally epidemic. High blood pressure is happening in people in their 30s. Degenerative disease. In my little mountain town, Mount Shasta, we have mountain climbers. You look at the old mountain climbers, they don't have any hip replacement. They don't have any joint problem. Then you look at the young mountain climbers, they have a hip replacement at age 40. And then the doctors just tell them, well, you, you're using it too much, that's why you're wearing it out. Well, what about the 80 years old that's still climbing the mountain, right? And of course, vision change and all these Parkinson's disease is happening in younger people. Mental illnesses. So many people are seeing the younger generation suffering from a, a very, very big group of diagnosis of mental illness. It's like suddenly human species are having trouble being happy, enjoying joy and, and, and life, right? 
immune system dysfunction is the most intriguing. When I first moved to Mount Shasta, which is a little town, has the best water on earth, and we have really no pollution compared to Los Angeles, New York City, and Houston, you know, one of those, and Salt Lake City apparently is very polluted. But I'm seeing a lot of people with allergies. Asthma, I was taking allergy pills, asthma pills. And people have psoriasis, MS, lupus, autoimmune disease. I had Hashimoto. And so what's really going on here? And I'm apologizing for this slide, it's not very clear. Is the immune system seems to be not active at the same time. How many people are seeing shingles, chronic viruses, psoriasis, Lyme disease? Now, Lyme, Lyme disease apparently is internationally epidemic. And it's seemingly that our immune system just suddenly lost power, and we are just suddenly facing this pathological attack, you know, from the pathogens we have had lived with for thousands of years, right? Cancer is now ranked number one killer in children among medical illnesses. Cancer has never been number one killer in anybody, right? It's attacking our younger generation. Cancer now is number one killer in people younger than 85. This is according to national statistics. This is ACS, American Cancer Society. They talk about one out of two men will face diagnosis of cancer in their lifetime, and one out of three women will face the diagnosis of cancer in their lifetime. Now, if we continue to focus on the treatment of the diseases, you know, whatever we're doing, with pharmaceutical polypharmacy or poly strategies to treat diseases, what we're going to see is non-sustainability of the whole thing. We have to look at the roots. If we're not addressing the roots, any therapy is now going to be very sustainable because you're always a couple steps behind the problem. We're always addressing the problems. And other things is going to come up if we don't address the roots. So sick, tired, and fat is one of the things that we all see every day, right? The second problem, I apologize for the, for the slides change because we, um, when we transfer to the slide, it gets changed. Um, the second problem is stress and toxins not only create diseases, it also create you know, the lack of quality of life. I was talking about love, feeling peaceful feeling healthy and vibrant and feeling mentally clear is influencing that. You know, human growth hormone controls the sense of well-being, which is pretty, you know, very big description. But when people don't have sense of well-being, is they don't feel well. It's not like they're sick or they have a diagnosis of disease. 